Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here. Yes, long, long overdue, but I'm doing the uh, the REC shares AIPI or AP and FEPI or FEPI update. So um, let's get to it. So obviously, most of you know what REC shares is. They offered a lot of different double leveraged ETFs and then they offer some high income ETFs. They actually only offer two high income ETFs at the moment. Uh, two of them being uh, FEPI, and then the other one is AIPI. FEPI currently shows a distribution rate of 25.2%. And then let's go to AP. What the hell? Go to ETFs. We go to covered call ETFs, and then this happens. Oh, there it is. All right, so if you click AIPI, their distribution rate, you know, as expected is higher. It's 34.8%. So these funds, you know, they basically own a bunch of different stocks. FEPI owns tech stocks. AIPI owns AI stocks, which includes tech stocks, of course. And then they write covered calls on it. These covered calls are not daily, weekly. These are typically a month or two out. So they're a little more long term. Hence, that's why they get the lesser of the distribution versus the yield max funds. However, they do capture more appreciation. So typically, these funds would have, we'll say, a better chance of staying either capital flat or having capital up, capital appreciation. Um, obviously, yield max, sometimes it fluctuates greatly and people do not have a comfort with that. So check out our latest blog post on our new Bitcoin ETFs. Okay, what is this? Um, okay, so they have, I guess, yeah, these were new. Oh yeah, they did send me a t-shirt on this. So they have 2X long Bitcoin daily ETF BTCL and 2X inverse Bitcoin uh, daily target ETF BTCZ, okay. So it's basically another uh, double leverage fund. Let's look at the Bitcoin one. Sorry, I know this is an income fund video, but it's basically a, uh, you know, a REC shares update. So yeah, here it is, T-Rex 2X long Bitcoin BTCL. Obviously, you know, this is available through other fund managers, um, investment funds, etc. So it's just another offering that REC shares is going to have. Uh, what, which one you choose is up to you. Um, so here's some information on it. When did it launch? Okay, they, they launched on July 10th. This price is 2235. So it's a good price for options should this get popular enough to be in the options chain. Um, their expense ratio is 0.95%. Okay, so that's enough about the leverage funds. Let's get into the FEPI and AIPI update. So since we last spoke, we did have a distribution in July. So in July, they declared, FEPI declared a distribution of $1.09. How does that compare to previous months? Well, every month from inception, they have paid over a dollar, all right? So that's all you really need to know. The month prior was $1.15, the month prior to that was $1.16, and the month prior to that was $1.09. So the fact that they paid $1.09, yes, still really amazing. The consistent factor here, it's the yield, they always yield 25%. Same thing as last month, they, they yielded 25%. So although obviously it was a decrease of six cents per share in distribution, it was still a 25% yield, okay? The R, uh, estimated return of capital, you know, that's another story that's, that, that you can get from their website if you guys care. But again, it's an estimate. You don't really know what the return of capital will be uh, until until the annual statement comes out. I did plug in $1.15, not sure why. Uh, maybe I did get that from the website. But either way, you can go that, you know, get that yourself. It's called the 19A1 notice if you care. I'm not gonna get into that now. All right, so let's look at the price and how the price has been performing. So FEPI, if you go back way back, right? Way back, zoom in. Way back when, when did this launch? Oh my God. October 11th, 2023, FEPI launched at 51.69. And let's see, did it ever go below 50? Yes, it did. In October, it also went below 50. Went to 49. Okay, went back up to 50. Okay, that's good. High 50s, mid 50s. All right, that's solid. Sorry for you getting dizzy, but I'm just showing you a quick price performance historical data. 
video here. Uh, 55, 56. Pretty solid. Pretty steady eddy. Uh, oh, went down to 51 again. Okay, that's trouble. 55, right back up to 55. 53. Because in the end, you know, if you just look at the price, you want to stay capital flat. You want to get a 25% yield. Fepi looks to be a good, you know, ETF for that. Okay, July still 55, went up to 56, 55, 53. Oh, went down to 51. Did go down to 50. Oh, look at this. Beginning of August, 48, 47, 47, 49. And then it went back to 51. So, obviously, um, you know, it went back to the launch price. So today, or it says today, but it's as of the last close, which was Friday, August 16th, the price of Fepi was 51.36. The launch price was 51.69. That is a capital loss of 33 cents per share from inception or 0.64% loss. However, in dividends, they have paid out a total of $10.40. That's a change of 20% from inception price. So that's a total return per share of 10.07. Again, this is without drift, this is cash dividend. So total return percentage, you would be up 19.48% from inception. I mean, you can't beat it. With a 25% um, distribution, you know, and you're staying essentially capital flat, that's a win. That's a win. Tell me how that's not a win. Of course, you want to yield more, but 25% is a pretty damn good yield, right? So FEPI is performing well. All right, now, also what I do is I cover the outstanding holdings. So what I do is I take the latest outstanding holdings and I export it from their website and I plug it in here and here they are. So what this is, is it shows that they do actually hold, um, you know, Micron Technology, Broadcom, NVIDIA, Advanced Micro Devices, Amazon, Adobe, Palo Alto. I know I can't say it, right? I'm never gonna try though, it doesn't matter. Tesla, Salesforce, Intel, Netflix, Meta, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, and a treasury bill. Okay, then what's this crap below? Well, cash, and then they have their covered calls. So yes, they outright own the shares and they do covered calls on them. And that's how they produce this premium, which is how they're able to pay you that 25% yield. Now, if you see the expiration date on these calls, um, it's September 20th. So that's, you know, a little more than a month out. So that's what differentiates this versus Yieldmax. Yieldmax does weekly covered calls. Um, you know, and rec shares, they do typically monthly or even further out. So obviously they have a covered call on every single uh, share that they own. You know, obviously when more shares, um, you know, they do like a reallocation to keep it pretty equally weighted. As you can see, the weighting is around, you know, six to seven percent um but then they would reallocate accordingly because some funds would go up some funds would go down and then they adjust the covered calls accordingly as well okay so that's you know the export from the website and you could see the net assets you know they total 371 uh, mil right so how do, where does that come from well it comes from the holdings right these are positive values so the fact that they hold all these underlyings, yes, this this is this is money. This is uh, you know actual positive value. And then there's treasury; they hold about seven million. Then cash, two million. And then there's these negatives. Of course, this is the amount they would have to pay to cash settle any covered calls. Because of course, when they opened the covered call, they sold a covered call. They got a credit. That credit went to cash. And then then you'll see the uh, you know that positive value went to cash, and then the negative goes to the. Uh, you know, the covered call line item in the holdings. So the net asset values, uh, value, as we said, is 371 mil outstanding shares, 7,250,000. How does that compare to last month, which was last time I did this was July 5th. Outstanding shares at the time was 5,675,000. So obviously that's a pretty good increase. Um, net asset value now is 371 million. The net asset value then was 360 million. So pretty good jump. Obviously the overall the NAV went down, of course, because the market kind of, you know, was doing a little slightly slight correction. New column they added, uh, shares held. They didn't have that last month. So uh, that's just another 
thing to, to note. Again, for, uh, for the holdings, for the stocks, these are the actual number of shares they hold. And then for the um, covered calls, I believe these should just be the contracts, okay? Now, to the right, this is where I do all the fun stuff. This is all formulated. So this is just going to grab the ticker from the covered call transaction so we can now judge them on their covered calls. So the ticker, as you see, is pulling AAPL. And then it tells you what the ticker is. It's Apple. And then it gives you the call strike price, 240. And then it gives you the current price of Apple, which is 226. And then it shows you how far out of the money they currently are. They are 6.17% out of the money on Apple. Again, this has a 920 expiration, 920. Today is August 18th, so it's approximately one month out. Um, so one month out, 6% on Apple. Maybe that's okay, maybe it's not. Again, we don't know. But their 30-day IV is 21%. This is a new addition to the spreadsheet. I figured I'd let you guys know, you know, which funds have the higher IV versus others. So, you know, I'm not gonna go into each and every line item, but you could see like Meta, 8% out of the money, that's good, right? Because when you sell a covered call, you know, the further out of the money, the better, right? That means you're gonna win. The cash settle, uh, when it gets closer to the expiration date, will be cheap. If it gets in the money, then obviously we're gonna we're gonna lose money on that trade. So, so far out of the money, most of these are out of the money, right? Six percent, six percent, four percent. Oh, Google is kind of close. They are 016 percent out of the money. So with a month away, if Google goes up, this this trade could lose. Okay. Now, if we go here, Tesla, they're in the money, but Tesla has a crazy bull run. So at the time, obviously, they sold the call at 210. Tesla's at 216. So yeah, they're going to have to, you know, if Tesla settles or ends up um, below or above the 210 strike price by 920, they will have to pay, they will have to cash settle at a loss, all right? Because I believe they cash settle everything on all these because they don't, they don't let any funds go, right? They keep their shares. So all of this is cash settled either way. All right, so that's the only one in the money so far. However, we got Netflix, 0.88% out of the money. That's a little tight. And then we got Intel, 0.62% out of the money. AMD, 0.97% out of the money. And then what else? Avgo, Broadcom, 1.04% in the money. Yikes. And then last but not least, Micron is 2.77% in the money. So overall, what is the average out of the money? Um, so if we take all of them, we get an average of 3.01% out of the money. With one month out, obviously that's a little tighter than what you would want, but this is how they play the game, all right? And keep in mind, yes, they may be 100% return of capital, but look at the funds that they own. If they're never selling them, right? We're getting capital appreciation on them. We're just not realizing it because they're not selling it. They may reallocate it, which may take a little capital appreciation. However, all of these options contracts that they're, you know, they're making money and they're, they're, they're losing money here and there. So they, they'll use the losses that, they're, that they have against those contracts and they'll net them against any distributions, which can you know, be classified as return of capital, which means we don't have to pay tax on it, right? Not tax advice, check your tax advisor, blah, 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 okay? So 30-day IV, so I did a uh, color scale. The darker the green, the higher IV. So as you can see, NVIDIA is the winner, right? Their highest implied volatility holding is NVIDIA. Is this the last tab? Yes, it is. The next one looks to be what? Uh, Palo Alto, everyone's favorite pronunciation. Then we have Broadcom Tesla in the high 40s, pretty good. And then we got Salesforce, 42%, AMD, 43%. So these are no joke, man. The low one is what? Microsoft, 19%. Um, yeah, Microsoft's the lowest at 19%. So not a bad you know, variety. That's what I'm going to say. Like, this is pretty good. Um, every time I review Fepi, I realize why I like Fepi. So again, it's just, it's a well done fund like this was a really smart strategy when they built this out and it really it does it does well of course it's not my 40 percent that i want because my goal is always 40 percent uh distribution yield with capital flat 
However, it's 25%. I can work with that. So this can always be a huge part of my portfolio. So anyway, that's the update on Fepi. Let me know what you guys think of Fepi. Now let's go to the newest of the two, AIPI. Same process will do. Um, they've only had one distribution in the month of July, that was, and they paid $1.48 at the time. It was a 34% yield. Obviously, that beats uh, Fepi's yield of tw uh, 25%, right? So no increase, decrease to compare it to. So uh, we will wait for August and see what they pay. It's coming up very soon. We'll see what happens. Um, this month was a little crazy, so... Uh, but either way, they're probably still going to yield around that 30, 34% range. All right. So from inception, what did we launch at? AIPI launched at the $50 mark, kind of like Fepi. I think Fepi was 51, we said. And how did they perform? Let's go. Let's see how they did. So they got up to 54. They got up to 53, 54, up to 55. Okay, that's good stuff. Back down to 53. Oh, here we go. In the 40s in July. Low 40, mid 40s in August. Okay, high 40s in August. And then we got to Friday close 50 bucks. So launch price 5067. Last close Friday, August 16th, 5033. That is a capital loss of 34 cents, capital uh, percentage loss of 0.67%. They've only paid one dividend. Again, brand new fund. It's hard to judge it already, but they paid a dividend of $1.48. Uh, that's a 2.9%. 2, 2. 2% increase um, from inception and total return that comes to 114 adding dividends and capital. So total return percentage 2.25%. But again, this fund basically just launched. So at least we'll take it. We'll take positive. All right. So how about this? How about their holdings? Well, here's their here's their holdings. They hold ARM Holdings, NVIDIA, CrowdStrike, Palantir, Broadcom, Micron, Data Dog. Palo Alto, Cadence, Arista, AMD, Meta, Qualcomm, Synopsis, Salesforce, Amazon, Adobe, ServiceNow, Cisco, Microsoft, IBM, Apple, Super Microcomputer. Then there's Cash hanging out in the in the middle, and then there's Google and Intel. I hope I picked that up right. Oh no, I didn't have to pick those up. Okay, good. All right, so those are the holdings. So as you can see, similar holdings, just like Fepi, uh, but a little variety because they have uh, other AI companies. So the total net asset value of this fund is 28 million, 28.8 million. All right, 28.8 million. What the heck did we say Fepi was? All right, 371 million. So obviously for context, AIPI much smaller. And outstanding shares, 575,000. How does that compare to last month? Last month had 200,000. Net asset value last month was 11 million. So again, pretty good jump, more than double. So good job, uh, AIPI. Their NAV is obviously 50-20, which we kind of talked about that. Now, you know, similar to FEPI, yes, they have the holdings at the top. And then right below, you'll see some covered calls, right? Lots of covered calls. So now let's go judge them. How are they doing on their covered calls? Oh, I didn't add the cover, uh, the color scale to the 30-day IV on this one. Well, we'll do it next time. Um, so where are we at? So again, same thing. It shows the ticker, the name, the covered call price strike price and then the current price and then it shows how far out of the money they are they are not doing as well as fepi did let's check their expiration date their expiration date similar to fepi was is 920 so they're a month away so right off the bat avgo in the money and then we got micron technology in the money 2.77 percent nvidia in the money 1.27 percent cisco in the money 3.96 percent then we got a whole crap load of ones in the money. Oh my God. Micron, 7.4% in the money. So yeah, they, they're going to have a loss here. You know, they're going to obviously pay out of pocket and take the hit on these. I don't know if the strikes were tight or these, it was just like bad timing. Their average percent out of the money is 0.45%. So AIPI, man, you got to work on your covered call skills. But uh, again, like I said, it could be timing. 
and they have probably have to follow the prospectus. So it's it could be some of this could be out of their control. All right. So again, out of the money, you want these again to to be to stay out of the money through expiration. They still do have a month. So some of these, like Amazon, for example, they're one point one six percent out of the money. But Amazon goes down below one seventy five. Call strike by nine twenty. Then they're fine. But so we'll see. But if Amazon continues to go up, then this is this will be a loss, right? All right. So thirty day IV. What do they got? They got any big ones here? Let's see. AI should be some high IV. 62% NVIDIA, okay. 64, super microcomputer. And then arm holdings is 60%. No, nothing crazy, to be honest. I thought um, I thought that AI company was in there, whatever the hell it's called, C3. I thought it was in here. Maybe they moved it, I don't know. There's CrowdStrike, 57% IV. I feel like that IV should be higher. Yeah, not IV not impressing me. Their average IV is 39%. That's not much more than Fepi. Their average IV is 37%. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I have to be honest, I did own both of these. And I decided to get rid of AIPI. They are 100% maintenance on Charles Schwab. And Fepi is not. Fepi is like 30 or 50%. So I'm just going to keep Fepi because Fepi does, so far, it does better. And it's they kind of overlap each other. So I, I, I decided, plus I'm cutting back on the amount of holdings I have. So Fepi is the keeper for me. So I don't know what you guys think. Let me know. Are you Do you own Fepi and AIPI? If so, why? Or if you own Fepi over AIPI, let me know. If you own AIPI over Fepi, let me know. All right. Anyway, that's the update for the Rex Shares high income ETFs. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I covered everything you guys are interested in. Um, feedback is appreciated, whether it's good or bad. Um, it's always appreciated. As always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you were entertained. If not, we will try again next time. I try to do an update on the Rex Shares high income ETFs once per month, typically sometime after their last distribution. Obviously, I'm a little late on this one, but um, you know, stay tuned for an updated one in September. If you want it more frequent than that, then I don't know. Let me know, but and I'll see what I could do. But monthly is probably what, what you're going to get. Um, twice a month would be a little hard, but could be possible if, it, if there's that much demand for it. So Anyway, so that's the update for uh, RecShares FEPI, RecShares AIPI. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I think I already said I'm not a financial advisor, but you guys know that. I don't have to say it over and over, do I? Um, but yeah, if you enjoy this content, hit the like button um, and then go from there. So that's it, guys. That's all I got for now. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Later.